Today, we're gonna to unlock the secrets of Mac performance. You're gonna learn about the storage and RAM tipping points for maximizing efficiency. Choosing the right amount of storage and RAM for your new Mac can drastically affect not only the performance and user experience, but obviously the price as well. And it's gonna go a long way towards determining whether your device meets your needs now and in the future. If you're a Mac user, understanding configurations is crucial for seamless integration across your Apple ecosystem. Now, the Mac community debates constantly whether or not more storage or RAM yields better performance. Some people swear by SSD speed, others by multitasking capabilities. Why you should care is because investing in the right specs now could save you from costly upgrades later, often external upgrades. A good lens to look at this through would be just future-proofing your device. If you like to keep everything all inside and you don't wanna to have to connect extra drives and whatnot later on, and you have to keep in mind, not everything is user expandable or replaceable. Also, this is Apple, right? Most of the time, it, that's not the case. But owning a Mac that runs like a dream, it really evokes pride in your tech. You feel good about it. It's like a feeling of satisfaction. Also, I would say getting it wrong does not feel good either. So you wanna get it right on the order page. So here's what I feel like is a really helpful analogy when you're on that order page. Think of your Mac as a chef and the RAM is like how many dishes you can cook simultaneously or your chef can cook simultaneously while the storage is kind of like your pantry size. Let's say you're buying something like a MacBook Pro for all that power. Well, more RAM means smoother multitasking, which is important if you're loading up on a bunch of creative apps, right? And then if you have ample storage, that means you're not gonna be constantly decluttering or having to use external drives, which by the way, can be cheaper, but still can add up or be inconvenient. So just kind of put things in perspective, I think this could be a little bit helpful too. It's not just about raw power when you're talking about your max resources, okay? It's sort of like an artist with a canvas and whether or not it's able to utilize that space efficiently. Apple's world here and just computing in general is kind of this era where software optimization plays a significant role. It's not just about the hardware and the specs alone. Apple's always been good about integrating things. So stay tuned. I'm gonna tell you how to truly make your Mac sing. We're gonna get into it right after this. What's a product that people love, love, love? Well, my productivity course, which helps Apple users get more done in less time with less burnout. It's not my only course though. I've got a course on Apple's Freeform app, which will help you go way beyond the basics, as well as an AI bundle It'll help you take advantage of all the opportunities AI is about to unlock for all of us, which you can currently pre-order for a nice discount, but all of my courses are linked up for you down in the description, so check them out. Okay, the balance between storage and RAM isn't just about capacity, like you might think. It's about creating a workflow that feels like magic for you. Now, this is gonna make some people mad, but a study by Tech Insights found that Max with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD or storage is considered optimal for most users, balancing cost and performance. I guess that begs the question, are you most users? <laughs> well, uh, this is really something that only you can figure out, but you know, the Macs are really marketed pretty well. If you go to the Mac Pro, right, or the MacBook Pro, and you're looking at sort of the use cases, like 3D modeling software, coding, video editing, photo apps, you know, graphic design sort of stuff, versus if you're just kind of casually browsing, shooting off some emails, you wanna use some of that Apple intelligence, right, to rewrite stuff or whatever, um, you kind of get a feel for which camp you should probably be in. Again, you want to choose wisely though, because your Mac does become an extension of your creativity, productivity, your daily life. So let's just run down this list real quick, okay? You should consider upgrading more RAM and storage if you're going to do some multitasking. If you're frequently running multiple applications simultaneously, especially resource intensive ones like video editing or 3D modeling, you might want to upgrade. If you're future proofing, if you plan to keep your Mac for several years, then upgrading now can save you from future performance bottlenecks. Storage, if you're constantly running out of space or slowing down due to a nearly full SSD that's so annoying, then more storage is gonna significantly improve your performance. And then there's specific tasks if you're a developer, gamer, virtual machines. In that case, you probably want at least 32 gigabytes. Gotta keep in mind too, if newer software versions come down the road, then it's gonna require more memory and more storage than your current setup might be able to handle eventually. And then just think about where you're at right now. If you're upgrading from a previous Mac, if you notice significant slowdowns during your regular use, that's a sign that your current RAM or storage is insufficient. It's always fun buying a new Mac, but it's also, you know, it's, it's intense too, because you don't wanna make a mistake. You wanna be real happy with what you get. And it's funny because in many ways, 
when you buy extra RAM for yourself, for instance, you're sort of, in a way, buying extra time for yourself down the road.